I will conclude this presentation with two brief examples of how cultural resistance can be created within the economic status quo I've outlined here. The stupefying cultural edifices that bear down upon us daily that empty our lives of meaning, but which all the while allow us to make music and pay the rent. First is Little Nas X's Old Town Road. Little Nas X from Atlanta, Georgia records vocals either in his closet at home or at his grandmother's house using beats found on YouTube and other social media sites. Young Keo is a college student who lives just outside, uh, sorry, college student and producer living in Amsterdam or just outside of Amsterdam who puts beats out on the web for sale, sometimes up to 10 a day. One of these beats included a banjo sample from the American industrial band Nine Inch Nails, which was then picked up by Lil Nas X and used in his song and video, the latter being a montage of the video game Red Dead Redemption. In a recent article in the New York Times, web native Lil Nas X referred to the internet as his parents and was able to use his profound and intuitive understanding of how pop culture moves online to his own advantage, firstly by straddling genres in the case of country trap, such that streaming algorithms would not put his music in the same shark pool where songs with a more competitive rap tag would feed. His work then gained more cultural traction by providing a suitable soundtrack for people dressing up in country and western attire uh, in TikTok videos. Lil Nas X was also able to set up a fake Twitter account under the pseudonym of Nas Mirage in order to gain, in, in order to further guide and hype his work in social media sites where it was likely to get more traction. His ultimate coup, however, was that Old Town Road was taken down off the Billboard Top 100 country music list, once it got there, of course, because it was not deemed country enough. To focus on whether this removal was either a racial issue or one of aesthetics here would be to trivialize the complexities of the matter. On with the story. Next, Lil Nas X reached out to Billy Ray Cyrus to re-record his song and now, it went num and now it's number one on all the billboard lists, uh, regardless of genre. Now, the ideological purpose of the American dream is precisely that, to keep everyone dreaming while they do their menial work, their menial tasks. And one could be forgiven for thinking that Little Nas X's phenomenal and meteoric success serves precisely that function. However, on closer inspection, we can also see a, guy, a young gentleman who's dropped out of college and who has managed to circumnavigate a stalled music industry locked into antiquated genre and distribution structures. Second, Wolfpack is a funk band from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Their 2014 album, Sleepify, is a deliberate attempt by an artist to redirect the mechanism wherein streaming services pay out their royalties so as to profit the artist and its audience more directly. Sleepify consists of 10 30 second tracks of silence and was purpose made for streaming on Spotify. Wolfpack fans were encouraged through social media to loop the record while they slept, generating 5.88 cents for a seven hour sleep. The money generated by Spotify streaming as promised by the band, was then invested in paying for a tour whereby fans could see the band for free. Although the band raised enough money to go and play, Spotify removed Sleepify seven weeks after its release. Now, in 1952, the American composer John Cage wrote a piece called Four Minutes 33, a composition of the same duration where the instrumentalist does not play. The ambient sounds of the concert hall and its environs constituting the work itself, and where each performance, of course, is different. In 4 minutes 33, sound is finally free to be just music. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, Wolf Peck have rediscovered the political dimension of Cage's 4 minutes 33, placing it in a contemporary online context, without compromising the band's quest to produce immaculately rendered funk. So. To summarise my presentation, a niche is an endpoint. Being cool does not subvert the status quo. Being cool 
is the status quo and in turn needs subversion itself. In a lay capitalist society like ours, being the lone wolf will not get you very far. And in our current political economy, amateur participation will also not get you very far. So you're gonna to have to move back and forth between the two, in the niche, out of the niche, back in the niche, out of the niche. Do this while you demystify, reconceptualize, and reinvent this very movement. But be very careful, there are many pitfalls and traps. For example, this movement will also mean that you are part of the flexible, decentralized labor movement, for example. So go offline when you can, drop out, yes, but don't drop off. We need you.